Does it matter which way up you use a large diaphragm condenser microphone? This question was posted in the comments under our recent review of the Lewitt LCT 1040 by the lovely Valerie of Lewitt, but YouTube deleted it because it had a link in it. We've had a few other comments disappear lately, but we'd like to reassure you that we never ever delete comments unless they're from Busty Belinda trying to spam a hot MILFs near you dating service, in which case we take a cheeky screenshot beforehand for research purposes only. But back to the topic. We've all seen photos of famous singers in studios from Frank Sinatra to Michael Jackson singing into a microphone that's hanging upside down. It's common practice for us in this very studio to hang a mic in front of a singer rather than have it mounted its right way up on a stand. And there's a lot of speculation as to why many engineers do this. So let's have a look at the most common arguments for and against. With the tube, it's the thermionic tube or valve we most find in audio gear and they generate heat. Some get warm, some get very warm, and some get very, very warm. The type used in a tube microphone will get warm enough to heat up the air around it and therefore the electronics and electrolytic capacitors fail when the electrolyte dries out, especially old or waxed paper types. So there is an argument in favour of keeping tubes and their heat away from the electronics and keeping the components as cool as possible. But manufacturers know that when they design their products and often we'll see the tubes poking up out of the top of an amplifier chassis with the components safely tucked away underneath, just like we see in the back of this Hammond organ. But the tubes in a microphone don't really get that warm, certainly not warm enough to cause the components surrounding them to be operating above their specified tolerances. But what about the capsule? Well, the capsule's in a basket, and under that basket is usually a substantial piece of metal, which does several things. It adds strength to the structure, keeps it clear of any potential interference from the electronics, but it also acts as a heat shield. So I think we can probably rule that one out. Using a well-designed tube microphone this way up will not shorten its lifespan or damage the capsule. But what about this way up? What about the tube itself? Isn't there a silvery metallic heat shield built into the top of the tube? And shouldn't we aim to keep that the right way up? Well, no, because the silvery coating isn't a heat shield at all. This is a getter coating, a deposit of reactive material that completes and maintains a vacuum. And if you look into a tube of this type, you'll often see a little circular component on a stick. And this is the getter reservoir that holds the material, usually barium, that reacts to heat applied during the manufacturing process that then evaporates and forms the silvery getter coating, absorbing any gas as it does so. So this has little to do with the day-to-day -day operation of the tube once it's done its job of absorbing any wayward gases. So that argument doesn't really hold any weight either, although some will argue that the socket should be at the bottom as heat rising can negatively affect the seal around the pins. But my own opinion is that it doesn't matter. Here's a very similar Hammond to the one we saw earlier, but with the tube preamp mounted upside down to make for a much shallower case. And they're both still working fine with the original tubes, despite being over 60 years old. So heat really isn't a viable reason to hang your mic upside down. So what is? Hanging a microphone on a heavy duty weighted stand like this with the boom arm extended means that the stand is out of the way of the singer, the bass is away from stomping feet, and they have much more room to articulate when singing. Win win. It minimizes reflections from the ceiling. I quite often record inexperienced vocalists with a microphone with an omnidirectional pickup pattern. This often sounds more open and airy, but whereas an experienced singer will know how to use a directional pattern and the proximity effect that they exhibit to their advantage, an inexperienced singer usually won't. So this can make editing and mixing easier. I don't have to spend hours automating the low end where they've been moving backwards and forwards from the mic, but an omnidirectional pickup pattern will pick up more of the room and that includes includes any reflections the floor or the ceiling might be contributing. Even the best Omni mics pick up sound better from the top than they do from the bottom, and that's because there's a body in the way, so this can actually make a noticeable difference. 
In this room we have a three and a half meter high ceiling and it's very well treated so there is an argument for keeping a mic the right way up to minimize reflections from the floor but in a normal domestic room you might have a standard plasterboard ceiling and it might only be a few inches above the microphone so it might be worth experimenting with hanging it upside down if this is the case it looks cool because frank did it this is actually the most common reason, although going back to getting stands and clutter out of the way of the performer, hanging a mic upside down can aid with getting the cable out of the way and make for even more room to articulate, conduct, direct traffic, or turn the pages of a score or lyric sheet. The center of gravity of some older large tube microphones can also mean that they're far more stable when hung. A professional, experienced singer that comes into the studio will have a preference, and most will prefer the microphone hanging slightly above their mouth and aimed down towards them at a slight angle, as this can aid in several things. Having the singer's head angled up into the microphone will open the throat and can yield a better tone, and with the microphone angled down, you're more likely to pick up sound from the chest, which can be considerable, further aiding in depth of tone. Using a microphone in this way is also likely to result in less plosives reaching the capsule. But there's one other option that looks just as cool that we haven't actually yet considered. Domino, woo -hoo. Don't leave in the sky. I can hear a cat. Oh. Floppy's come. Floppy Vero. Floppy! He, he can walk on the wall! Ooh. How is he doing that? He's spider flop. Spider this is quite scary. I just see a giant cat <laughs> hovering over me. Spider He's walking on the wall. Spider Floppy, it's really inconvenient you being here at the moment. <laughs> ah, f you bit me, you little bastard. <laughs> Domino. Woo -hoo. 